Well, hello there, dear viewer. I'm sh as I'm sure you've noticed, um, I am not in my usual place, and it is not a um, sorry noise. Uh, I'm in a pu technically a public place right now. Um, I'm not in um, screen catch capture mode because my screen capture program, after the numerous updates of the Linux Mint, uh, decided that it did not want to record anything and it didn't want to save it. Um, I'm not a tech whiz, so I wouldn't be able to tell you what happened um, with the technical terms. So... I have a new mic. It may look cheap, but that thing, it feels like, it, it feels solid in my hand. It's great. Um, so obviously I'm using cheese right now. And you have no idea what I'm doing on my screen. Um, oh yeah, and one of my tabs crashed. Because I was thinking about doing this. Um, live. But, 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 I've decided to just record it on cheese and, oh, okay, I have to restart Firefox. All right, so, plenty of things happened. The reason why he was not here is, well, I, I, um, I, I am a temple devotee. Right now, I am in the Hare Krishna Temp Montreal Temple. And because of the pandemic, and um, also because I tend to not been able to say no, uh, I've had a bit of a. Um, I was overworked. I feel better now. I'm good. I'm all right. Still recovering, but I just wanted to talk to those few who like what I'm do, who like what I'm doing, who. Are very into or to this very niche things, niche things. I don't know if I'm saying that good, which is um, Harry Krishna fan fictions, which I am still the only one. So, about those fan fictions, <laughs> I'm up to 14 works right now. And I've moved on from the Mega Man series to My Hero Academia because, okay, I would like to be happily surprised, but with the direction that has been taking and um, one of the Twitter accounts that Mr. Horikoshi put up, I don't think, um, I think we're going to have a, okay. Uh, Midoriya Izuku is going to have going to perform a heroic sacrifice to save everyone. People will die. It'll be a war. It'll be ugly. It won't. You know he, uh, Horikoshi doesn't. Gl okay, her Mr. Horikoshi is a very weird manga artist. Well, ma story storyteller. Because on the one side, you know, you have all the slapstick, especially at the beginning. But at the beginning, there's also this very heavy show of abuse. I mean, come on, Bakugo blowing, blowing Izuku's shoulder off just because, you know, he's a bully. And, you know, he's trying to redeem Bakugo, but excuse me. And I've been, you know, personally, I've been... A victim of bullying at school and what Bakugo's doing that's illegal that's ba you're basically putting a gun to someone's shoulder and shooting it off at okay it may be blank bullets but there's still heat to it and it's still cause it's not just bullying right now it is a criminal assault he gets away scot free because oh well he feels bad now for ten years later no wait twelve years later no 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 and many of my the folks back at the um at the um you know Boku no Hero side of the fan fiction they pick up on that and they're like. Izuku's not all right, you know, that that's not okay. I've never seen any shonen anime in which the protagonist is so abused canonically. I mean, okay, so there was Naruto, but with Naruto, there was just this one time with the mob. It doesn't show, 
you know, how he grew up until five years. And, you know, he doesn't show... I mean, Naruto is still a happy child. And if you see, yes, he doesn't have a mom, he doesn't have a dad, but it's implied that his life was a lonely one, but not a terrible one. By this, I mean... With Izuku, okay, I'm an Asperger. I also got a diagnostic that changed my life for the worst. Once again, Izuku had the same thing. So, with Naruto, he got it at birth. Everybody knew, except for him. So, he doesn't quite get why people call him a fox. But he's not, you know, showing any sign of PTSD. But with Izuku, he is. He, has, he shows sign of abuse. I, I know I'm, you know, I don't know why I keep talking about that. I guess I just have this on my heart right now. So, so you have the, you have the slapstick, but you have the fact that Izuku is terribly abused and he has no, um, no sane adult helping him. It's always a, an uphill battle. I mean, I don't know. I mean, your politics is pretty crappy, but right now in Japan with the cork, it's got even worse. Um, he's in a terrible, terrible situation. And many, many times I feel so, I see myself in him. Like, how come Izuku doesn't, doesn't say that, you know, I've, you know, I've been bullied, I've been abused. Well, uh, let me tell you something about my experience about being bullying in a specialized school, which has like this, you know, and it says that, yeah, so we have... People will intervene if if a if a fight breaks out. Well, they they will only intervene if people are starting to kick and cry and to run away from school. If it's about bullying, yeah, they will try to make you talk about that and to work it out. But bullies, they don't give a you know they don't give a crap about it. They they just want to see you suffer. So yeah, they will they will look bad at the adult, but they will keep going. I mean, I had to quit my school and go directly to adult school, which was great by the way. So. Yeah, once again, uh, by Krishna's will and mercy, I now have Izuku tattooed to my physical heart. Not my heart of heart, that belonged to Krishna. But, yeah, so I, I, feel, I feel for the green bean. I feel for our dear gremlin. And also the power he got, you know, once again, if you just... It's... Horikoshi style is this, this is just a big, big, big hodgepodge. You have the humor which recently in the, in the manga, you know, they dialed it down and they suddenly brought it up. But they, I take a previous two chapter when they managed to drag Izuku back to UA, which, you know, it's... Once again, if it was a real school in a real situation, I'm astounded that Izuku was not brought to the nurse office or to the, well, now the field hospital first thing to give him, you know, fluids, food, bath, and fix whatever bone he, he's broken. Because let's be honest, at that point, fighting alone for a whole year, you know, he's messed up inside and outside. Uh, no, instead he got the, you know, let's have the Deku squad get, you know, bait him in the most slapstick way possible and then make, make him go to sleep. I saw in one of my story, one of the, um, one of the, uh, alternate scene of how it start is okay spoilers in this story because the, the moment I just saw Izuku just collapse and just how messed up he was I'm like yeah his heart will give up and for me it's just it's... okay so it's either on the way to UA or you know he they bundle him up make him sleep uh, Jiro Kyoka comes out and then she's realized hey that's way too quiet you know she at first is like um, you know, everybody's here, I can hear their heartbeat, everything's chill. And then she see that, oh, Izuku's in the chair. He's a bit too still. Hey, wait a minute, I'm not hearing everybody's heartbeat. Um, so that's just one, one another start of a story. No, that's not how I started it, uh, because I didn't know. When I started writing the, ch the story, um, well, uh, Izuku was still on the way to UA. <laughs> I'm kind of beating myself up, but I couldn't help it. Um, so yeah, you have the you have humor, but you have slapstick drama. You know, you have slapstick humor that is actually is hiding abuse, 
and then you have no care. Nobody's backing uh, Izuku up. Sure, that the the art style is uh, especially at the beginning is bright. It's cartoony. It's kind of Looney Tunes. And then you know, the further you go in, the further you're like, oh wait, you know, life is not all that shiny and bright. It's kind of, it's giving me more of a p, you know, a Puella Madoka Magica kind of vibe. That, you know, oh by the way, being a hero is not that all that great. You know, I, I don't know what's in with the, with the 2020s or, you know, this part of the century in which heroes are being completely and utterly um, ripped apart, you know. But I guess that's because people want to have real heroes. And nowadays, you know, we don't really have any real national heroes. So we're looking for... Um, you know, we're looking at pop stars, we're looking at animes, we're looking at, because we don't find those great qualities in people, and the people who have those great qualities tend to, you know, don't want to show it out of humility. But obviously, being a Hare Krishna, yeah, let's go back to my actual roots, uh, being a Hare Krishna, I can tell you that the greatest hero is obviously God. I know, I know, you're going to go be like, well, yeah, I mean, he's God. But l let me explain just what type of heroics Krishna can do. I'm talking, you know, Bhagavan Shri Krishna and his devotee. Like, behind me, that's a dark word. That's a hero. His name is Srila Prabhupada or, a or Abhay Charanaravindam, a Abhay Charanaravindam Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society of Krishna Consciousness, he began his heroic work of uh, stopping World War III. Also, the reason why it doesn't happen is legitimately because he began to go around preaching to the hippies and the other younger generation about love of God. Oh, now you're going to say, well, you know, that's... Oh, yeah, the power of love. That's very cheesy. Hey, you know, that's why I'm recording on right now. But, you yeah, know, guys, the love, real love is an amazingly powerful uh, energy. We're made out of that. We're made out of that love. So, Srila Prabhupada's uh, over 55 years ago, I believe right now, um, went on a boat named Jaladuta. He was 69 at the time. Also... Krishna's 16 year old he, he he knows those he knows those joke um so we were uh to the to the year 2000 and those types of jokes um that's not the first time there's nothing new uh, once again time is a cycle there's such a yuga tetaru yuga dwarpa yuga and kali yuga and then it starts again it's not time doesn't stop Time always keeps running in the material world. There's nothing to stop it. Um, at every mo at ev at all, <sighs> yeah, words. Every time the sun goes up, your life comes down. That's the fact of life. Well, material life. In the spiritual world, time. What is that? Do we eat it? <laughs> no, seriously, the spiritual world. Um, I mean. There was one time where, uh, time, in which Krishna, you know, he was playing with his cowherd boyfriend, and that was early morning. And then he wanted, and you know what, I want to have a Ras Lila in the middle of the night with my gopi girlfriend. And then immediately it became midnight, and he was dancing with his gopi girlfriend in, in um, you know, in the autumn, you know, in Sharad Purnima, which is coming up, by the way. We call it Kartik. Um, and then after that, like, hey, I, you know, I want to, I want to go back to my friend and he went back to his friend being in the early morning. Once again, in the spiritual world, time is not time. Time is a place. And anyway, it's, I could talk about hours about the spiritual world. Um, and that's gone back to our great hero, Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada, um, he turned 70 on a boat. He was born right after Janmastami. Yeah, unlike Jesus, we will always know exactly when our Acharya, you know, took birth. 
because um, God's like, uh, you know what, my previous Acharya, nobody know exactly when he would took birth, either in the middle of summer or the middle of winter, so he's going to follow me. He's going to take birth um, on uh, Nandastami, uh, no, no, that's not Nandastami, it's Nandotsava. And thus, Srila Prabhupada took birth there as the greatest gift to humanity. And I'm saying that um, without any... I mean, it, it is a fact, the greatest gift of humanity. You, you may not know it now, but whatever, next, next time you'll see a Hare Krishna, crack open a book. You know, just take their book, ask them actual questions. You know, like who you are, you know, what's the goal of life? Um, how, you know, ask them that, ask, ask them who's Krishna, who's Chaitanya, um, how can you be eternally happy, and ask this not with the, you know, not with the, uh, yeah, I'm going to make fun of you sort of mood, but ask them sincerely, and they will give you the, you know, life's ultimate question, why are we here? We, I know, we all, all of the Hare Krishna knows, even the even the kids know. We, you know, why do we exist? We exist to make God happy. And this was given by Srila Prabhupada. Right. And by this knowledge that, that God is a person, it's not just a light, he's not just the Lord sitting on his throne, uh, giving orders to everyone. Krishna is the beautiful, dancing, active, all-attractive Lord. He's the Lord who don't show himself as God. Now, um, in the spiritual world, in the highest echelon, the highest abode, Krishna's just a neighbor's kid. Okay, neighbor means he's the, uh, he's the prince of Vrindavan, um, because, you know, mom and dad are King Nandara and Queen Yashoda, but he, he's never anything above, you know, prince of the cowherd. He's not... Well, okay, he's part of the Yadu dynasty, but he's not, like, living in a big, huge... Well, no, his palace is big and huge, but um, every morning he goes out and hurt a cow. And, you know, if you look at the Var Vedic Varnas, um, actually, Krishna's not even in the Varna. Okay, there are four Varnas in the Vedic, in the, in the Vedic uh, culture. I'm sure you know, you know, there's sudras. Well, first, they are, they are the brahmanas, and the job of a brahmana is to bring people to God realization, not just to beg for give me this, give me that, and, you know, being smartest or being terrible persons who complain about everyone, thinking like I'm better than you because I took birth as a brahmana and I take a cigarette out and smoke it because, uh, you know, I can do no wrong. No, no that's not a brahmana, that's, that's a demon. Um, real brahmana are those who are clean, kind, um, who are willing to give to the Lord and to people, um, who are who knows the goal of life and who are willing to teach. They are the teachers, they are the doctors, um, the intelligentsia. Not, I would say scientists, but scientists that they are more like engineers and engineers. Well, no, actually, engineers would be close to brahmana, but they're kind of a mix between brahmana and shudra, because they are also working with their hands. Um, so Brahmana, highly intelligent, kind, sweet, humble, humble, humility is the most important. Um, so that's your Brahmana. Then you have Kshatriya or the warriors. Um, and those you have your kings, your queens, you have your warriors, uh, people who know how to use uh, diplomacy. You know, they're ha um, Krishna's father Vasudev was a diplomat. Um, uh, and you know, you have protectors, you have warriors, you have, and also teachers, because they're, um, they can still teach. The, they're practically brahmanas, but with weapons, and they cannot uh, take charity. Instead, a, uh, a king has to give charity to people. And yes, tax are leveled. Um, yeah, so... Uh, so taxed are level to people, but those all of this money, at least once every 10 years, the entire treasury is empty to do um, Vedic sacrifices. So I'm sure you're like, oh, well, you know, that's a waste of money. Well, no, actually, because at the time of those sacrifices, they would give the money, the ghee, the gold and everything to sponsor pure 
actually Potan Brahm and another one we have right now to do big sacrifices to get the rain. And with the rain comes the food. So that's how they would feed their people. But okay, and after that you have the Vashya, which works with money. And Vashya also work with cows and animals. They are the agriculture. They are the one, they are the stomach of the people. They produce the food. They work with the money. They are the bankers, the agriculturists, the, um, the cow herd. And cow herd is actually one of the lowest. And then you have the sutras who assist and work. They are the workers. They are the musicians, the dancers. Um, they are the engineers. It's not that they are less, well, they are materialistically smart, but not spiritually smart. So real intelligence comes from spiritual smartness. And yes, a sutra can be a Vaishnav. So Krishna is part of the lowest rank of the Vashya because he works with the cows. And so they're considered kind of like animals because he associates with animals. He's God. <laughs> God's a cowboy. Um, so that's, you know, this is the depiction of God we, that Srila Prabhupada gave us. He gave us a depiction of God who dance and play music, who sing and who loves unlimitedly. It's not just this nebulous, esoteric figure surrounded by angels sitting on a throne, made out of fire, protected by, uh, by Merkaba. No, 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 no. Uh, the Lord that we have, that Srila Prabhupada gave us, that's Krishna. And Krishna is the Supreme Prasantya of Godhead. And with this knowledge, we know that to be truly happy, us, the spirit souls, uh, we have to, you know, we have to return to our, na to our normal, to our nature to serve the Lord, to serve Krishna. And as I would tell you, the moment you return to this nature to serve the Lord, oh, <laughs> You feel blissful. You feel so happy. I mean, sure, sometimes, especially now with the material body, you will hit a wall like I did a, a few months back. But at the same time, when you're sane, when you're not hitting that wall, I mean, there's, there's something so special at my baking cookies for the Lord or making a pie for him or just cooking breakfast. Uh, other people is cleaning the temple. Um, others is hearing classes about him. It's dressing him on the altar. It's bathing him. And the fact that he's not alone, his girlfriend with him. So it's, it's an amazing thing. And it's, okay, basically, reincarnation means what you've done in this, in this lifetime, um, you will do it in the next lifetime. Basically, you're preparing yourself for your next life in this present life. And you will keep doing what you're doing. So if you were a warrior, you will, stick, you will keep fighting. If you were working with money, you will still de be dealing with money. But the thing is, the thing is, is that if you don't have the right karma, if you perform since, yes, I know, now I sound like an evangelical, but listen to me. Sin means you cause harm to other people. If you cause harm to other people, um... Then, then you have reaction. It's just like you hurt your little brother. You gotta get smacked. You know, it's it's not esoteric. It doesn't have. It's not illogical. It's very much logical. God's the father. Right as the mother. If they see us, their kids fighting amongst each other, bullying one one another, then they are sinful reactions. And those sinful reactions, whole. Oh, the coronavirus was one of them. What one of those? Hitler was one of those. The 9-11 was one of those. Climate change is one of them. We are hurting the cows. We are hurting animals. We are hurting others by gathering, you know, this and this, you know, everything I have, like this is from Myanmar. The people over there who made those things, they're working a switch up. And yes, I know now I sound like I'm better than thou, but you know, Unfortunately, where I live right now, in my, in my, in my situation, uh, I cannot afford to have like this, oh, we build it in America by well-paid people, and it's biodegradable. No, unfortunately not, and we don't have that right now. But if we use it in Krishna's service, all those sins, the Lord remove it, so we won't have those reactions. Uh, like, you know, if you exploit the planet, if you exploit other living beings, that's what causes sins, basically. And so you're dealing with Maya. 
and Maya or Durga Devi will slap you because you're adding, you're acting, you know, you're turning your back to God and you're trying to enjoy for your own senses, but by hurting other people. Even if you don't see it, it's still counted. Just like you blink your eyes, uh, you murder, you do a genocide of all the bacteria, and it is counted. I know that's ridiculous, but it's counted. And while it is very, very little, you know, the amount of time you blink during a day, um, yeah, 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 that's pretty bad. Which was why in the Vedas, uh, Grihastas or people who live in households, even Brahmanas, um, actually everyone except a sannyasi would perform sacrifice to pacify the demigods and Lord Vishnu so that their karmic load would be lightened. But w when you're a Vaishnav like I am, or trying to be, then your karmic load is immediately lightened, meaning you suffer less, meaning you're happier, meaning, hey, you're less attached to the material world. You're less attached to heart and home to think that will hurt you when they're gone because everything will be gone in one day. You're not afraid of debt. You're not afraid of debt. You are, you're out of this debt. You are alive. And, you know... You will go even higher than this material world. You won't get born in one of those four varnas anymore. You will do what you're doing, which is to serve God eternally. Wait. Um. Sorry about that. I forgot that my computer has a sleep mode. So yeah, Srila Prabhupada gave us the peace, the peace formula, he gave us eternal life, and I'm not talking about this nebulous thing Christians are saying, I'm saying it's a science. Once again, it's a socio, it's a social science of, you know, it's a socio-spiritual science, triple S guys, and the socio-spiritual science, you learn how to socialize with the Lord, with God, on a personal, affectionate level. And... As I've known, sure, you've known to my many, many videos, that's very sweet. And so to come back to my, little, my hero academia, um, yeah, so Deku, or in one, in one of my fan fiction, we'll call him Daksha, um, he becomes a Vaishnav. Actually, there's one of them in which, um, you know, so he almost took a swan dive, but they found a Gita. He found a Gita on the top of a roof. That's because there was one guy, another quirkless person, or somebody with a villain, with the quote-unquote villainous quirk, uh, went on top thinking, you know, I will kill myself, but somehow or other, in a place where there's no... Because this is, this is Japan in which when the quirk happened, they decided, okay, screw religion, we're God ourselves. Um, well, there were still a few Gitas left, and this guy managed to find one. And, you know, as he was about to jump, he's like, you know what, let me read something before I do that. So he read, he read the Bhagavad Gita, got his realization, left it for the next guy, and then he started the spiritual life. In come Izuku, and he find it, open it, get his eyes opened, and then he decided, hey, you know what, um... I'll just give up everything, and he decided to be homeless by himself. Kind of like this guy who... Okay, I know there's this book in Japan, in which it used to be, you know, just an average uh, salary man who one day they realized that, you know what, that's just a rat race. There's no use to it. So he willingly became a homeless person. And I've personally known a person like that, who willingly decided that, hey, you know what, the working nine to five... You know, 75 hours a week uh, for just for an apartment and for that. Why? Why work so much when everything comes to you anyway? And yes, he was God conscious. So he decided, hey, you know what? I'll be homeless. He was willingly homeless. And he was the happiest guy I know. Because he was, when you're conscious of the Lord, you say, the Lord will give me what I need. So there's no more worry, no more anxieties. And you're happy. So yeah, that's what, that's one of my, that's is what one Izuku did. And as I'm, okay, I was thinking about following, you know, what happened in the manga. Uh, but then, uh, but then he ended up befriending, befriending Tomura. And then after that, Krishna's like, hey, you know what, let's get Tomura out of his situation. 
Yeah, this one's pretty great. Um, and of course, there's uh, the third um, part of the Identity Quest series what happened after recovery progress, which is not even finished. And, uh, well, actually, right now on um, Identity Quest, I'm nearing Endgame, which for me is super exciting because um, I've been working on it for, a f I think, a year or two right now. And I've been, I've grown so much through it. And I wanted to thank you guys for, yeah, you few guys, who's, guys, gal, whatever you identify with, for you know, for having followed me in this wonderful process. So I will still do my reading right now because, hey, I got a good one. Um, maybe not with my screen chapter device since I'll try to boot it up, but I don't think it'll work. Same thing with Audacity. For some reason, my Audacity is doesn't... I mean, it's made for Linux, but it doesn't like microphones, even USB one. Okay, okay, Boomer. Okay. I know, dead meme, but I don't keep current on meme, guys. I have better things to do. Um, okay, graphic, internet, office. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to try to put a bit more French Canadianism in sites, because, I mean, I know right now we're going to mineral vote and, you know, French in Canada, because we're, I'm in the only French province, which is accounts for like half of Canada, and we're losing our French, and people like, you know, we're going to try to fight to keep our French, so no more English words, but thing is, Montreal's bilingual. Thing is, the only thing we have to do is to make it cool. You know, like Japanese. <laughs> Make it cool, guys. Don't just fight over it, because people think, you know, French people are, you know, they look at them from their nose. No, no, I mean, and one of my fan fiction, the reason why I like to do a self-insert, that's because I can put as much French, Canadian French word as possible. Um, and it'll be coming up. And, <laughs> well, personally, I'm not one to, well, actually, we call it our sack. We give blessings, basically. Like, all of our curses are actually, like, like tabernacle, um, usti, usti, that's sacred bread. <laughs> Christ, but that's, like, general. Um, uh, we have ca callus, callus. <laughs> so, yeah, we have... A very interesting way of speaking, and which is why, okay, once again, Asperger, um, ironically, my little sister is the one who went to an orthophonist. Well, I, I right now I realize that me too, I would have needed it. It's okay, it's karma. You know, it's past. I went through it. Just have another fruit of it. No problem, no biggie. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, simple screen recorder is the one I use. Um, and. Continue, continue, and okay, so the problem is that you did not select an output file, but I do have an output file, and it's YouTube. I do save. Yes. And no, it's it's not working. It's, it derped. It derped hard. What to do? Okay. Um... So, fan fiction wise, um, I'm just gonna run through it, and yes, eventually I will need to read through all of them. I have over um, close to 500 chapter, I believe. So I have Deus Ex Machina, which is also heading toward the final part, toward the end game. From oh, so from useless to expert is a Boku no Hero, Boku no Hero Academia, and a Kirby crossover. Thing is. It's not Kirby that's one of the main character, and it's not Izuku gaining Kirby power. No, he gets adopted by Zero Two. And you know the one. Da yeah, but actually Zero Two is a Hare Krishna. Why? Hey, I'm a fan fiction writer. I'm not like all of those fan fiction writers who do like, yeah, you know what? Time travel. Yeah, you know what? Rehash with Izuku with a crazy power. Nah, 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 nah. Or Izuku get adopted by this guy, that, that guy mostly Aizawa Yamada. Because, you know, those are obviously gay. But you know what? Sure, let's go with that. No. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. I'm having Izuku being adopted with a, by a Gijinka zero uh, two or Shunya Dwei, and that's actually how you say his name in Sanskrit. And also, again, three brother as uh, Rimura, Rimoro, and Rimuru. Who are those? Well, you know, in the crystal shard. You know those three dark matter spawn that breaks the crystal and possess uh, um, Waddle D, Adeline, and DDD? Yeah, well, that's their name. <laughs> um, so they are Hare Krishnas because in Zero Two's team, the Mahamantra is sung Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And yes, there's another part after that, but you're not here. Uh, that's not exactly what I'll be doing this one, but hey, sure, why not? So yeah, he's a Hare Krishna, but he's still an Eldritch Abomination, and I cannot wait until I get to write the All for One versus Zero Two, you know, big fight. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be messy and fun. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, I'm good. So. How to Man Two Broken Heart is also heading toward Endgame. Um, basically, um, everything seemed to be falling apart, but not really. Um, then They Came from the Stars also are is going Endgame, and it's uh, you know a pretty short story, but I guess it makes sense. As I'm heading toward um, you know uh, Boku no Hero. A territory, so Krishna want me to wrap things up quickly. That's nice of him. Um, the coronavirus, I feel like I'm more like midway since there's still a whole lot of things left to do. Um, well, midway. Also heading toward endgame, but not as close, despite being chapter 18. Obviously, you have Identity Quest, and Identity Quest, yeah, 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 I'm heading toward Endgame, and we're going, okay, so you may think us Hare Krishna to be, you know, ahimsa, not gonna hurt people, and it's true, we won't step, we, if we can help it, we won't step on an ant, if we can help it, we won't kill, but at the same time, um, in our culture, in our ancestral culture, we also know great heroes who've killed thousands, like, Bhima, uh, Grandfather Bhishma, who was a beast on the battlefield. I mean, the reason why Duryodhan thought he would win the war, that was only because of Grandfather Bhishma, who had lived through, um, I believe, three generations. So yeah, the guy was old, and he was a beast on the battlefield. You know, with him and his arrow, oh, limbs were flying. I mean... If you don't know how in Vedic era they used to fight bow and arrow, do yourself a favor, go on the whole project and look at just the, go at Lunatic Ultra and this will give you an idea. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's how far, that's how fast and how numerous the arrows were. And uh, this was true, at the time people had unlimited arrows and people had like, if they didn't have unlimited arrows, they had mantras to bring special arrows. If not, they had uh, oodles and oodles of arrows stuck in Kakua. Kakua. Um, I don't know what Kakua. Kakua, that's the French. That's how we see it in French Canada. But, you know, the, the arrow holder. Um, so, yeah, you know, they had many of them on, the, on their uh, chariots. So, uh, it, they were basically human machine guns at that point. Um, so we're heading, and we also have Krishna himself and Balaram, and okay, I know right now, especially what happened in Bangladesh, I mean, 
the guy, you know, the fanatic extremist who started that, he has no idea what type of hornet's nest he kicked. I mean, sure, us, Hare Krishna, we may not fight now, but know that we do have Hare Krishnas in the army. And, you know, if you start making too much trouble, which he already did, by the way, um, he may get a, he may think here that he'll get away scot free because the government won't do anything. But Krishna's not the government, and Krishna, there's nothing too degraded for him to do. I mean, he's God; he cannot go low, he cannot go high. That's him, and he will make him pay. That's just a fact. You kill, you kill the devotee, wound many, once in critical, burn a Murti of Prabhupada, destroy Murtis, you're dead. Actually. Touch a devotee and your life is technically over. You may live, but you're still, you're a dead man. Okay, so that was my pitch. Um, Le Bon Diable, the Mascouche. This one is, um, okay, it's past the point where, you know, um, X is recovering or, you know, you get to see how bad X's mind was to um, X and Omega, you know, living together. It's like, yeah, so we do admit we do like each other and a bit more Hare Krishnaism because it's happening at Maskush, which is something local for me. It's so just 45 minutes from the temple and we do have a farm over there and this farm, 100, well, 200 years later, is doing rather well, all things considered. The Lotus of Mercy and Wiley and the Wiley doll, um, well, hard to say, but um, I don't know what the end game will be for that one. I just know that um, I believe I'm like halfway, maybe. I did the, the quest 2.0. I'm not even past the, you know, I'm like. Um, I'm still at the part of Armless Zero and the Holy Dom and. And Omega just realizing that, wow, you know, not killing people is pretty great and cows are cool. You know, <laughs> that's pretty much how it is. Um, an act of God is really still at the beginning. It's still like prologue type of chapter. And God's Dancing Doll, which is uh, the second posted story of, uh, you know, Boku no Hero and... Uh, go to Vaishnavism crossover. Um, basically, this one, I'm still at chapter one, but um, basically, just to tell you how it will go. Tomura has a random encounter with the happiest hobo on the planet. This brings the leader of the League of Villain on a quest line he never thought was available to him. Featuring little to no angst, well, except for what happened to, Tomur to Tomura, for Izuku, oh no, for him, he's living the life. <laughs> Sacred madness. Oh yeah. So we have, uh, Izuku is not worshipping Krishna directly. He actually goes through Goranga and Nityananda. Who is Goranga and Nityananda? Uh, they are the last time the Lord was on the planet. Um, that's their, was their name. That's Krishna and his brother Balaram. Uh, cosplaying as a couple of Brahmana. Actually, Nityananda, I don't even know, he was born a Brahmana, but I don't think, no, he had no reformatory, because to be a Brahmana, you have, kind of have those ceremonies that bring you higher. Like, you need to have your Brahman tread, you need to be given mantras. Um, Nityananda had none of this. Well, Nityananda is an Abaduta or a saintly madman. Yes, there is such a thing as a saintly madman, and there would not be anyone madder than Nityananda. And he is the most amazing people you will read, person you will read about. <laughs> how crazy? Okay, so that's how, that's the first, the first time I heard about Nityananda, it was from a saint that came to the temple. Um, his name was Yashoda Dulaldas. I don't know if you'll hear what I'm saying, but I hope he does. Anyway, um, and he was telling about Nityananda, and I believe it was on Nityananda's appearance day. And then me, who was still young at the time, well, devotionally young, says, Wait, is he crazy enough that then when the, there's a kirtan, he pulls up all of his clothes and put his coat his underwear on his head? Uh, Yeshuda Dula look at me and says, Yes. <laughs> and after having read Chitana Bhagavat, I can tell you that actually, no, Nityananda doesn't wear a scope on his head. He just doesn't wear it at all. <laughs> oh, the first part of Nityananda's pastime. 
the especially in Mayapur, the amount of time he is stressed. Um, I mean, there's one time in which he comes to Lord Chaitanya, and you know he dresses him up, and then you know they have this ceremony from one devotee. You know, I believe it's of Yasa Puja, and he goes Nityananda goes into such ecstasy that of go of goes his clothes. <laughs> And he was sometimes acting like a five-year-old or a baby. And the other time he was acting, well, not quite like God. I mean, Nityananda was in the mood of a child. And, yeah, he was still a saintly madman. He was still very saintly. And um, he was mad in love of God. I mean, who wouldn't be? Uh, once you know who the Lord is, you know, his past, I mean, now we treat us as a person. Who wouldn't love him? So, and then love doesn't have to be, which was a present to a certain Kose on AO3. Um, I don't know um, if I'll read this one, because it was, you know, a gift. And then there's I Am Not Zero, which used to be a Tumblr post. And I actually have more than one chat on Tumblr, and then the one after that... Um, Tumblr went to an update and then every time I tried saving it, it just said no. So that's all I have. Oh, and I also have the third one, which is the third part of, you know, the Identity Quest series. And this one is, uh, Deku just dies and gets a new heart and then, um, you know, has an amazing life with Yamada in, uh, Chernobyl. It makes sense in context. Anyway, I think I've spoken enough. I'm getting my getting pretty tired. Um, I may record another installment of my reading series. I believe um, either I'm at um, Karuna Virus or I'm at Identity Quest. And uh, yeah, I'll start to read it and I'll have some water beside me and hopefully I won't get too tired. Um, I'll take, I'll split it in two or three or, you know, make some short, well, short videos. Anyway, it was nice seeing you again. All is well. Hare Krishna, Hare Bol. Oh, and I also have another series. Yeah, P.S. Um, this series will be me just putting on my MP3 player or, you know, going on my YouTube and just belting out the holy name on video game musics and remixes. Because I still like them a lot. And those, you can check the holy name on it. So yes, if you're obviously on YouTube. Uh, if you see like me putting the Maha Mantra somewhere on a song. You can sing that. Well, I mean, there's some song which will make you curse to, he to heck and back. Uh, like uh, Flowering Night. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Hare, Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's an exercise, it's an experience. Anyway, hi, Bill, Hare Krishna, nice to meet you all.